Nighthawks at 1370 WKIK. And joining us this afternoon in the studio is Motown Pete Ragusa, the drummer for the Nighthawks. Good afternoon and welcome to Southern Maryland. Hello. How you been doing? Uh, been uh, taking it easy lately. We haven't been uh, driving around the country as much as we normally do. We've, been, we've had about two weeks off. Mm. And uh, just been relaxing and getting ready to go back to play tonight. Well, the band has been... Uh, really busy over the past what 10 years as far as recording goes and doing gigs yeah we've I guess we're what you would call a working band um, our, our our source of employment is is playing and you know we and we've never been <clears throat> had any ideas about being, you know, a great recording band as opposed to just a great live playing band. Mm -hmm. How did, uh, well, first off, we should mention you're playing at the Club Sunrise out here yes. in Southern Maryland tonight, tonight and, tomorrow and tomorrow with Danny Gatton. Yes, that'll be hot. Yeah. How did the Nighthawks get started? Well, uh, the band originally started by Mark. Um, he, Mark Winter, our harp player, was he was living in uh, New York City for couple of years going to school and he came back to DC and formed the band with Jimmy in 72 and uh, about two years later they put together a new rhythm section and that's when Jan and I came in and we've been together ever since your first recordings were on Aladdin records yeah um, a fellow by the name of Billy Hancock who used to play with Danny Gatton in a group called Danny and the Fat Boys uh, resurrected the, the label and uh, it's the old Aladdin label with a lot of old R&B artists on that back in the 40s and 50s and we put out our first album on that it was called Rock and Roll mm -hmm. well the band has, has definitely paid a lot of dues over the past 10 years what I want to play next is the album that you did along with John Hammond maybe you can tell the folks how you hooked up with John Hammond and how all that came about well we've <clears throat> we've done shows on down the down the line with John all over the country and um, whenever we do shows with him we always eventually bring him up in our set or he brings us up in his set and we play together and it just always felt and sounded so good he just figured one day well, let's, let's give it a shot and make a record so he had owed Vanguard Records one more album and we went in and did it with him and uh, it's, it's one of my favorite of the ones that we've done you know, as, even as opposed to ours, I like it more than any any of the ones that we really have done. Well, let's play something off it, okay? This is John Hammond and the Nighthawks. You better watch yourself. McKay's Foodland, your money-saving grocery store on Tulagi Place in Lexington Park and on the Leonardtown Hollywood Road usually uses this time to let you know about their fantastic weekly specials. Are your children getting ready for high school and a career in the competitive world? Enrollment for kindergarten through eighth grade is now underway at Father Andrew White School. Busing to and from Father Andrew White is available throughout the area. Registration for kindergarten, first grade, and other new students will be held Monday and Tuesday, March 29th and 30th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Wednesday, March 31st from 4 to 8 p.m. For more information, call 475-9795 and give your children a good education. This is WKIK 1370 a.m. and with us is the drummer for the Nighthawks, Pete Ragusa. Uh, joining us this afternoon. We just listened to a couple of things from the Hawks. Uh, one thing in particular, Walking By Myself from Jackson King's, an album which uh, featured a lot of blues guys, original blues guys that you cut that with. How yeah, did that... That was a, a concept album that we had worked on with uh, the backup band for the Muddy Waters band, and uh, who at the time, were, it was Ponta Perkins on piano, Calvin Jones on bass, Willie Smith drums, Bob Margolin guitar, and Guitar Junior on guitar. And uh, it was nothing more than a late night jam that went on early into the morning next afternoon, and we just let the tape roll, and um, we put out uh, one album, I think it was in 78, and it was a follow-up in 79, I think. Mm -hmm. 
And now the band's recording on Mercury Records. Uh, we we left Mercury at the beginning of the year. What's uh, the blues scene like in Chicago in 1982? Well, I guess it's what you would call... There's a lot of, well, I guess what you would call fourth generation players. They're the sons and daughters of a lot of the, the, the living legends that are still around. But it's, it's their kids that are, that are now on the scene. And uh, it's still very happening. A lot of the old, his, you know, the really historic blues clubs have kind of shriveled up and gone away. Like, Teresa's is gone. And, oh, geez. A lot of them are gone. But, but it, if you look in uh, Chicago, you know, arts directory, it's, you can see clubs all over the place where people are playing. Well, it's still I'm, pretty vibrant. I'm sure that traveling around as much as the Nighthawks do, you sample all the different audience responses throughout the country towards the kind of music that you're playing and I was wondering like you say you just came back from Florida mm -hmm. what's it like down there well it's real sunny <laughs> <laughs> um, well there's a lot of people in the places that we played like we played Key West which you wouldn't think would be you know music headquarters of the world but there, there were a lot of people from all over the country that have seen us before that you know were down there vacationing and most of the state is like that. A lot of the college areas in Florida we play there. A lot of kids from the D.C. area, Northern Virginia and Maryland, they go to school down there, so they know us and they tell their friends about us and they come and see us. I know you're familiar with the tragedy that happened with John Bellucci in oh, yeah. the last two weeks, but one of the last interviews that I did was with Matt Murphy. Oh yeah. Uh, who was in his band and also plays with James Cotton and the Nighthawks play with James Cotton. Oh yeah. Did you work with Matt Murphy? Yeah, we've <clears throat> there's been uh, many a jam that we were in with Matt when Matt was playing with James Cotton. And uh he's he's one of the tastiest guitar players in the blues idiom going right now. He's uh, he can do it all too. He can it's not he's just not limited to blues. He can do real tasty jazz and R&B and he's, he's a real strong player you know it's funny John Belushi sat in with us once in, in New York City at the Lone Star we were up there and we we were doing a show with Otis Rush backing him up and um, Johnny Winter and John Belushi both showed up and they both sat in and it was right about the time that uh, they were putting a they were basically scouting us out as a potential backup band for the Blues Brothers because they were going around the country looking at a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he, he sat in with us and he had fun and went away. <laughs> they were traveling under their own name without Bellucci and Aykroyd. It was some all-stars. Um, they, remember they were playing about a year ago? Yeah, um, what were they called? Um, Something weird, but... Yeah, what it was, it was, it was a bunch of players that came out of the scene out of Willimantic, Connecticut. Yeah. And there was a club up there that we used to play at. And um, basically some of the personnel that worked in the club had been in bands in this community. And I think Matt came out. Charles, the bass player, came out of that. Um, and they had, you know, it was, it was kind of a clique of musicians that came out, and they they chose some of them as their backup players. Yeah, but Matt Guitar Murphy, mm -hmm. as he's referred to. This next gentleman that we're going to play, the Nighthawks, were very influential as far as getting his career started and getting him into national prominence, uh, probably even getting him on the Midnight Special. Well, and we're talking well. about George Thorogood. <laughs> you want to tell us about George? Well, we we had first heard about George, so... 75 he was playing the same club we were playing in, in uh, Boston in Cambridge and it was just this little blues club and we used to play and George would play on the weekend sometimes and we never got to see him but we had heard his record and um, we're always anxious to, and we finally hooked up with him he just came up and introduced himself and said hi I'm George and because uh, we were always crisscrossing on the interstate and missing each other and we developed a real nice friendship with George, and we brought him down to D.C. to do shows with us, and uh, he brought us up to Delaware to do shows with him, and it's been a real nice relationship over the years. <laughs> ¶¶ 
It's 2.44. This is WKIK, Leonardtown, Maryland, and our guest this afternoon is the drummer for the Nighthawks, Motown Pete Ragusa. Somebody called up and asked about uh, the Cherry People. Uh, ah. Yeah, they they were asking uh, what had happened to uh, the former members. Jan Zakowski, our, the bass player in the Nighthawks, was at one point one of the members of the Cherry People, and... Uh, as far as I know, we were see we were in L.A. last year and we ran into Punky, the guitarist, and he had a group called Angel, and I'm not sure if they're still together or not. Hmm. They recorded I don't know, three or four albums. And uh, Doug and Chris Grimes are still in the D.C. area. They 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 resurrect every once in a while in local bands, and I'm not really sure what any of the other guys. Uh, we see Rocky, the drummer. We, we run into him in Florida every once in a while. Yeah, I remember the English centers. Yeah, Jan came out of that band, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're playing down at the Club Sunrise tonight. Yeah, along with starting Danny about 9.30. Two shows? No, we're going to do three sets, um, playing tonight and tomorrow. We, we'll do a set by ourselves, and then the last two sets, uh, Danny Gatton will be playing with us. And uh, if you've never heard the man, he's... A true living le- legend out of Washington. He's uh, one of the finest guitarists alive, and um, he's doing a lot of work these days with a lot of country and western artists and pop artists out of Nashville. And uh, he's got a little bit of time off. He thought he'd say he'd like to come down and sit in with us. So we're we're gonna have a good time tonight. Um, we'll be down there. We're gonna also, if I can mention, we're gonna have a lot of our our albums that uh, we had done on Adelphi and the Mercury album that uh, we're gonna, we got for a uh, special occasion tonight and we're going to sell them, sell them at the stage along with t-shirts and the whole bit. You know, just Great. A lot of people have been asking us about our old albums and we finally have them. We're going to bring them down to the Sunrise Club. Well, people should pick up on that and, and go down. What uh, is your long range plans with this new album that we're hearing about 10 years live? Yeah, we uh, recorded five nights over the Christmas holidays down at the Bayou, and uh, with the help of uh, Glenn Kern and, and Bill McCullough, our sound engineers, they have it all mixed up, and it's ready to be pressed and should be out May 15th. It's it's a live album with first album that we've had that, that is all original, and we're real excited about it. It's, Really, the first album we've got that really hits it in terms of what what we sound like live. It's it's real powerful, and we're real happy about it. So that should be out around the 15th of May. Well, what kind of material are you doing in concert now? Um, it's basically what what we always do. It's a it's a blend of R and B and rock and roll and blues, rockabilly, with um with our touch to it. I guess you could say it's uh. It's a, it's a melting pot of all those kind of things, and uh, we're real proud of it. Real proud of it. And uh, from the test pressings that we've, that people have heard, people are real excited for us from from having heard it. And uh, I'm actually saying we're gonna we'll be selling that too on stage, and you'll be able to get that one in the stores. Well, this next thing that we're gonna play is Pretty Girls in Cadillacs. We've been getting response about that. Here at WKIK. Oh, yeah. Would you like to say anything about this song before we play it? Um, it's kind of it's kind of funny how people have uh, latched onto that song. It's originally recorded by a guy by the name of Buddy Johnson, who was a black uh, big band musician out of Washington. As a matter of fact, he had bands in the 40s and 50s, and he just died recently, like last year, I believe. And uh, his singer Ella. His sister, excuse me, his sister Ella Johnson was lead singer in the band, and she sang another song that we did on the album called "Upside Your Head." And if you heard the two songs side to side, you wouldn't recognize them, you know, as from what we did with it. Okay, well we're gonna play it. These are the Nighthawks. One, two, three, and.
That was Junior Wells and checking on my baby and the Nighthawks before that. Junior Wells is still alive and kicking. Oh, yeah. He's still playing. I'm living in Chicago. Yeah. Well, we're talking to Pete Ragusa, the drummer of the Nighthawks, if you just tuned in. This is 1370 WKIK. We have some AP radio news coming up in about a minute and a half, and then we'll be back after that and talk to Pete some more. Uh, before we go into the news, uh, I'd like to ask you about if the Hawks are going to be writing their own material. Uh, well, we have been writing our own material over the years. Um, we throw away as much as we do. Why? Well, we're just that... Um, if it doesn't grab everybody in the group, then everybody seems to lose interest, I think, sometimes in, in the song. So we, the originals that we do, it's it's are songs that everybody feels real strong about real positive it's got to be a song that you want to play be able to play every night and not lose interest in after a while and the, the live album we have coming out it will be all original all original material mm-hmm. the only other album we ever attempted to do original material was um, Side Pocket Shot we had a few original songs on that one and that was back in uh, 77 so it's been a while since we did any any more original material but yes we will continue to to write and try to progress as writers and the, the new album that will be out will be entirely live recorded at the yep. bayou live at the bayou does that contain original stuff or yes it will be all original yeah oh, good well we look forward to seeing you tonight uh playing down at the it's club gonna be a lot of fun we haven't been out this way in a while and uh you like Southern Maryland? Oh yeah, we get some great, if I can say, hell raising crowds out here. That's and the people great. really know how to have fun. We're going to break for the news and we'll be back. WKIK Leonard Town. I'm Ed Thompson in Washington. Early this morning in Las Vegas, two high school students and a teacher were shot shortly before the opening of classes. The teacher wounded in that incident has died. The two students are listed in critical condition. George Bailey is a 17-year-old senior at Las Vegas Valley High School, and he says he and a friend barely missed getting hit by the gunman's bullets. Me and Marty was walking to school. Uh, we came across crosswalks. Aging Committee Chairman Claude Pepper described the proposed cuts as a kind of Chinese water torture. He claimed many elderly people will be forced to do without health care. Nora Wolf, Capitol Hill. Representative Pepper added that those cuts in Medicare and Medicaid will amount to a staggering $60 billion in the next five years. This is the Associated Press Radio Network. The forecast for Southern Maryland looks like this. Cool and partly sunny today. Highs in the mid-50s to near 60. Rain developing tonight. Continuing Saturday. Continued cool. Lows tonight in the 40s. Highs Saturday in the low to mid-50s. The chance of rain is 20% today, 80% tonight. And Saturday in Leonardtown, it's 55, Lexington Park 56. On Breton Bay and Solomon's Island, we'll next have low tide at 408. Once again, 55 degrees in Leonardtown at 303. Our guest this afternoon has been Pete Ragusa, uh, Motown Pete, the drummer from the Nighthawks. And Pete, I really appreciate you coming by WKIK. Thank you for having me, man. It's been a lot of fun. I know you have a sound check to get to. Yep. And I hope everything goes well tonight. Yes, come on down. We'll rock you. Yeah, you'll be here tonight and tomorrow with a fantastic guitarist, Danny Gatton. Yes. If you haven't seen the Nighthawks, it's quite an experience. Thanks a lot. And the next time you come through town, I hope you'll come by again. Look you up again. And maybe we'll get George Thorogood down here. We'll see if we can pull him in. Okay. Pete Ragusa of the Nighthawks. We're going to go out with Little Sister from the Mercury album. And uh, again, be looking for the new album, the live one coming out. But... You re-recorded this twice. It was on the first album, and then that you yes, did. Yes, actually three times. We did it on Live at the Psychedelia, too. Why? Oh, it's just one of those songs we like to play. The Nighthawks like to always press Yeah, yeah. He definitely left an uh, impression on us, his style. Ah! 